So let's take a look at this set of mirrors and uh, the hardware that comes with it. So looks like you have four uh, cap machine screws, uh, four beveled machine screws, and they've got the uh, Allen head uh, fitting in there, so they should be identical to what's already on the back draft. And then four washers, all hardware, stainless steel. Uh, the mirrors, nicely labeled. Here is the uh, driver's side mirror uh, to just help avoid confusion. And I unpackaged the uh, passenger side mirror uh, just so we could take a look at this and the finish. Uh, so as you can see, the arm is uh, just just incredibly uh, well machined. Uh, the, uh, the arm is billet aluminum. Uh, not sure what the back is, perhaps aluminum. I'll, I'll try to put this in the comments uh, as I go forward. Uh, the mirror is glass. Um, and obviously very, very crisp and clear uh, compared to the Radot. Um, and we'll do some in-car comparison of that uh, between this, this set of mirrors and the ray dots. So, without further ado, let's move, move on to the install. Alternatives, uh, there's a, um, uh, I, I guess a more expedited uh, method of putting them on. And then there's the Dream Car Company recommended method of putting them on. Uh, I, that's this one. Uh, I'm going to follow the recommended method, uh, so we'll go through that step by step. So we're over on the driver's side of the car now. I'm going to remove this wind wing. If you'll notice right here, let me move this around a little. I put a piece of tape on here just in case I get interrupted or uh, just simply lose track of things. This little piece of tape indicates this came from the driver's side. That's just my mental uh just for my mental awareness of uh, where things are coming from and uh, where they're going so go ahead and make sure this uh fender cover is covering all the uh and uh eight millimeter wrench and remove the top one first but not all the way just enough to get it uh, so i can uh, remove it by hand or by finger um, I want to have both hands on things when they come apart and obviously if you've got both hands on tools you're not controlling parts so take this one and uh, if you'll notice I used a screwdriver with the appropriate uh, blade size for these these screws uh, so uh, I don't get any rounding so while I've got these off I'm going to do a little polishing on the uh, on the window frame too um, as you can see here, this happened before I bought the car. This hardware gets loose, and while this car was at the dealership uh, on the floor, this uh, they were doing test drives, demos, things like that. Uh, I think this car was out at the SEMA show one year as well, uh, since I found some SEMA paperwork under the seat. Um, this thing came undone. And what it is, this this uh, lower bracket vibrated loose, and it swung back. And of course, I got this scratching here. So, um, some point in time, I'll clean that up. It, it's not that important to me at this point. Um, but what I will say is, uh, everything I'm doing from here on out, uh, I anything to do with the windshield frame or the hardware attaches to it, gets uh, locked tight. Um, I, I don't need things uh, flying off uh, while I'm going down the road, potentially damaging the car, damaging the car behind me, or simply just losing the parts and having to uh, buy more to replace the stuff that uh, I lost. So anyway, uh, off with these. And I won't try to keep from dropping them, but if I do, I've got my fender, my, you know, my paint protected. So there's one. I'm going to leave these in for now so it holds the wind wing on down in my collection tray and there's two with that lock washer okay there's one and there is two there we go okay so got both of these off 
and we're going to go ahead and position the driver's side on the passenger side of the car, driver's side wind wing to the passenger side of the car, and vice versa, and get set up for uh, the next steps. Now then, so, so now we just have to install these in reverse orientation. So what does that mean? That means like so. So before they were like this with the uh, hinge or the uh, bracket facing out. Now they're facing in, like so. Okay, so let's get that done. Things first, line that up, and I'm gonna drop this uh, screw through the top, I think. Let's try that again. There we go. There we go. Okay. Ah, uh, see, that's why you uh, you want this fender pad. Not only does it save your pain, it saves you a hunt for your parts as they drop into the car. So there's one down. And the other one. Drops right in there we go and just work it back and forth until it drops all the way through and uh, come on okay. baby so we're going to get these screws back on which is a little more difficult than taking them off but uh not too terribly bad we'll come back in and adjust the tightness on them once we get started taking our to get this in here so I can hopefully uh, get it in there without too much trouble. My, I've got big hands and this is kind of a tight workspace so uh, I'm not sure that's any better but uh, uh, we'll see. I'll speed this up uh, during editing. Yep, not liking that angle and there. There we go. Eight millimeter wrench. Pull that nut on. There we go. And adjust the bottom. Make sure we've got uh, the appropriate and appropriate resistance. Uh, we'll have to do a little bit of uh, final adjusting before we, uh, you know, lock this thing down for a road test. So that, that feels pretty good there, but I may have to tighten it up a little bit because of the uh, weight of the mirror that's going to go on there. Okay. So, using the SAE hardware supplied with your mirrors, place your two stainless steel screws using your uh, 1 8 inch uh, Allen wrench and, uh, and screw these into your uh, mirror arms. Uh, OK. 
Okay, I didn't tighten it all the way, just leaving it just before it gets snug so I can get this other second screw started. Then I'll go back and tighten them up. Uh, there is no specific torque, just uh, good snug. I did put a little bit of uh, Loctite on each screw uh, so these things don't uh, shake apart at a later time. I have had that happen on my other uh, windshield screw hardware. And that's it. Or the, uh, the old style mirror is there compared to the new style mirror. And here is a point of view from the driver's seat. Um, much, much clearer. So you get a chance to see what I would see, or at least as close to what I would see. Um, does it give you 180 degrees or even 120 degrees of vision? Pretty darn close. Um, the dead spots or the blind spots I had before are completely gone. The blind spots I had before, the ones that I can't see with my peripheral vision, are uh, taken care of with these new mirrors. Uh, the ray dot mirror, um, I don't know. Hadn't made up my mind whether I'll remove that or uh, leave it there. Um, I don't see myself using it anymore, so uh, I may end up removing it. We'll, we'll just have to see. Um, but I am, I am in, I am in love with this these mirrors now. So uh, if you're considering using buying these, I definitely recommend them. Um, well worth the money. Um, I've had some blind spot issues in the past. I can't turn my neck as good as I used to, and um, I think these will really help take care of that. Anyway, that's all. Uh, hit that subscribe button. Uh, follow me, Cobra Life, and uh, more reviews coming.